Lesson 2.12, solve multi-step word problems using equations. We can represent a multi-step word problem by using an equation. Then we can solve the equation. We can make models using the given information. Then we can use the models to write and solve equations to solve each problem. We can solve a multi-step problem by using several one-step equations. We can also use the order of operations to write one equation that has a combination of operations. The order of operations tells us the first thing we should do are operations inside parentheses. The second thing we should do is multiply or divide from left to right. And the third thing is add or subtract from left to right. Here we've got 5 times 4 in parentheses. We need to do that first. That means we have 2 plus 20. 2 plus 20 is equal to 22. We have the same exact digits, except now the 2 and the 5 are in parentheses. So even though it says multiply or divide as the second thing to do, we have to remember we have to do inside parentheses first. So even though it's addition, which is down here, it is inside parentheses. So we do 2 plus 5, which is equal to 7, then we multiply it times 4. 7 times 4 is equal to 28. And remember, a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. So you might see letters of the alphabet like A, B, C, N, P, Y. You might even see Q or X or S. But you're not going to see a lowercase o or a lowercase l because they can be confused with a 0 or a 1. A computer has two hard drives with 64 gigabytes of space each and three hard drives with 32 gigabytes of space each. And the files on the computer use 107 gigabytes of space. How much hard drive space is left on the computer? So the first thing we should do is underline the important information. It's important to know there are two hard drives with 64 gigabytes three hard drives with 32, and that the files that are on the computer use 107. This can be written as four equations, four one-step equations. We can write 2 times 64 for the two hard drives with 64 gigabytes. That's equal to 128. We can model it with a bar model with two boxes that each have 64 in them. We can use algebra and write 2 times 64 is equal to some unknown amount, and we can label that n. Our second equation is 3 times 32. We have three hard drives with 32 gigabytes. That's equal to 96. We can draw a bar model showing three boxes with 32 in each one, and in algebra we can write 3 times 32 is equal to p, that's all of them, so we know that's 96. The third equation is we add the 128 plus the 96 to know how many gigabytes of space there are on the entire computer. We can model it with a bar model with two boxes, 128 and 96. And in algebra, we can write 128 plus 96 is equal to A. And that's 224. Our last equation, our fourth one, would be the 224 minus the 107 gigabytes that are already on the computer and files, and it leaves us with 117 gigabytes. We can model it as 224, 107 is being used, and this empty space would be our unknown amount. In algebra, we can write 224 minus 107 is equal to y. We know there's 117 gigabytes of space left. Now that was writing it as four one-step equations. The order of operations is a special set of rules that tells us the order we evaluate expressions. We do 
inside parentheses first, then we multiply or divide from left to right, then we add or subtract from left to right. And we can write the hard drive problem as one multi-step equation. We had 2 times 64 for the first hard drive and 3 times 32 gigabytes for the other hard drives. We knew that the files were 107 gigabytes and we needed to know how much space was left. We can write 2 times 64 plus 3 times 32 minus 107 and that will be equal to our unknown amount. Why? We do inside the parentheses. We have 2 times 64, which is equal to 128. We have 3 times 32, which is equal to 96. We add the 128 plus 96 and get 224. And now we subtract the 107 gigabytes, gigabytes of files. That's going to give us 117. We solve it the same as the single step equations, but we wrote it as one equation. We didn't write it as four separate equations. We need to find the value of n. That's our unknown amount. We have 6 times 15 plus 8 times 36 minus 17. And there's no parentheses, so the first thing we do is any multiplication or division from left to right, which is 90. We can do a little math on the side. Now we have 8 times 36. That's equal to 228. Now we add the 90 plus 228 and we get 318. Now we do the subtraction. Now we have 318 minus 17 and that gives us 301. So there were no parentheses so we skipped to the next step which was multiplication, and there was more multiplication. Then we add or subtract from left to right. So we added these, because they're on the left, and then we subtracted. When we don't follow the order of operations, we get a different problem and different answer. We have 5 plus 3 times 4. We have it here also, 5 plus 3 times 4. If we add the 5 plus 3 first, we're going to get an 8, times 4. That's equal to 32. This equation represents the statement Bob ate five candies after lunch, three candies after dinner for four days. He ate this many candies a day for four days. He ate 32 candies. If we do multiplication first, like the order of operation, it represents this statement. Bob ate five candies on the first day, then he ate three candies a day for four days. So this is how many candies he ate for four days. This is the first day. We would do 5 plus 12 equals 17 to know how many candies he ate. We need the parentheses to show 8 times 4. Or our equation represents a different problem. If we had parentheses around this, we would know we were adding 5 plus 3 to get 8. Then we were multiplying it by the four days to equal 32. If the parentheses were around this one, we would know that it represents this statement. And we need to multiply three times four first. So in your homework, it's best to follow the order of operations. And when writing an equation for a statement or a word problem, it's helpful to use parentheses to tell us which operation to do first. If an equation is missing a step from the order of operations, we move to the next step. We have 5 plus 8 minus 6 plus 2. There's no parentheses, and there's no multiplication or division. So we're just going to add or subtract from left to right. So we're going to start here, because that's on the left. 5 plus 8 is equal to 13. and we're going to the right, so the next thing to do would be to subtract 6. 13 minus 6 is 7. Going left to right, the next thing to do is plus 2. We do 7 plus 2. We know it's equal to 9. If there are parentheses, we do within the parentheses first. 
we have 5 plus 8, which is 13. Now we have 6 plus 2, which is 8. And now we add or subtract from left to right, and all we have is a subtraction. So we do 13 minus 8, which is equal to 5. Do you see the difference of what happens when we have parentheses or when we don't? They're the exact same numbers, the same digits, but we'll get a different answer depending on if there's parentheses or not. So anytime something is missing from the order of operations, just go to the next step. So just before I said the order of operations is a special set of rules that tell us the order we evaluate expressions. So here's looking ahead to fifth grade, a mathematical expression does not have an equal sign. So an expression would be 2 plus 4 minus 3. There's no equal sign here. A mathematical equation does have an equal sign. It's got an equal sign. So this is an expression. There's no equal sign. And this is an equation. There is an equal sign. When we are solving a very long equation, we don't see any parentheses, do we? We can draw a circle around some of the operations, like we know we're supposed to do multiplication first according to the order of operations. We can circle those multiplication problems so that we can see them clearly. Or we could put parentheses around those multiplication or division problems to see that we need to do them before we add or subtract. So to solve this, and remember I always say turning our paper sideways can keep place values straight, we're going to do the multiplication first, 7 times 35. We're going to get 245. Now we have to do 3 times 18, that's 54. Now we need to add this product and this product 245 plus 54 will give us 299. And now we have to take away the 22. 299 minus 22 is 277. So this equation, n, is equal to 277. So just keep in mind, you might see an equation like this, and there are no parentheses, but we know we're supposed to multiply first. So you can identify which ones are multiplication. You could even underline them, couldn't you? You could say, I'm going to multiply this one, I'm going to multiply this one, and get products. Mr. Lee has four baskets with 24 apples in each basket. He has three baskets with 25 oranges in each basket. If Mr. Lee sells 28 apples, how many apples and oranges does he have left? We can write 4 times 24, that's how many apples he has. We can write 3 times 25, that's how many oranges he has. We need to add, to, add, add them together, so we've got a plus sign. He sells 28, so we're going to do minus 28. And that's going to tell us how many apples and oranges he has left. That will be our n. We start by doing 4 times 24, and that's equal to 96. Then we do 25 times 3, which is equal to 75. Then we add the 96 plus 75. We add these two products together, and we get 171. Now we're going to subtract the 28 he sold. 171 minus 28 is 143. We know that Mr. Lee has 143 apples and oranges left. We did multiplication first. Then we added and subtracted from left to right. When an expression or equation does not have parentheses, we follow the order of operations. There are no parentheses here. We know we're supposed to multiply or divide from left to right. We look over here, we see addition, so we're going to ignore that for now. But we see 8 divided by 2. So we're going to do that first. That's a 4. Subtraction is going to be ignored because I see multiplication. So we're going to do 4 times 2, which is 8. That means we have 8 plus 4, which is 12, 
we minus 8 plus 2. See that? Now we have 12 minus 8 plus 2. We need to add or subtract from left to right. We do the 12 minus 8, which is a 4. We add the 2. Our answer is 6. Here's a problem with money. Lisa sold 46 cupcakes for $2 each and 38 cookies for a dollar each. She used the money to buy three new baking pans for $18 each. How much money does she have left? Well, when she sold 46 cupcakes for $2, that's 46 times $2. And she sold 38 cookies for a dollar each, so that's 38 times $1. And that's how much she sold, so they needed to be added together. She used the money to buy three new baking pans, so that means she spent money. So that's a subtraction sign, but the three pans were $18 each, so we have three times $18. We start with the multiplication, 46 times $2, that's $92. We have 38 times $1, that's $38. And we have three times $18, that's $54. Now we do our addition and subtraction from left to right. We have $92 plus $38, that's $130. And we subtract the $54 and we get $76 left. We know that Lisa has $76 left from her sale of cupcakes and cookies. And we remember the dollar sign in our answer because it's all about money, isn't it? Bob had seven pieces of rope that were 16 feet long and four pieces of rope that were 18 feet long. He bought three more pieces that were 12 feet long. How many feet of rope does Bob have now? We see seven pieces of rope that were 16 feet long. We see four pieces of rope that were 18 feet long. And it's very important that he bought three more pieces that were 12 feet long because that means he's adding it to what he's got. We can write seven times 16 for the seven pieces of rope that were 16 feet long. We can write 4 times 18 for the 4 pieces of rope that were 18 feet long. And we can write 3 times 12 for the 3 more pieces that were 12 feet long. He had this amount and this amount, so we can add those together. There's a plus sign. And because he bought the 3 more pieces times 12 feet long, we're going to put a plus sign here because he bought them. We're adding it to it. We do 7 times 16, which is 112. We do 4 times 18, which is 72. We do 3 times 12, which is 36. We add 112 plus 72 plus 36. We get 220. Bob now has 220 feet of rope. So write down the order of operations in your notes so you know the three steps. And be careful because depending on the order that you solve an equation changes the word problem or the statement that it represents. We're going to move on to chapter 3 now and we're going to learn how to multiply two-digit numbers by two-digit numbers and how to estimate them. And I hope I'll see you there. Bye.